In this video, I'm going to talk about the Arrhenius equation and its application uh, to determining different kinds of uh, reaction rates at, at various temperatures. And it has applications all over the place. Uh, it's going to be applied to, say, dark current, dark current in image sensors. It's applied to electron and hole concentrations in semiconductors. It's applied to curing schedules for epoxies. And I'm going to walk through an example of that. And then another application that I've run into in the past is lifetime testing, life testing of non-volatile memory. And these, you would think that these are actually quite a few, uh, quite a broad range of topics, especially when you're talking about a curing schedule, which is for some sort of polymer. Uh, but it all is governed by the same fundamental principle. What is, by the Arrhenius equation. What is the Arrhenius equation? Well, first let me write it out. So it looks like this in its general form. E to the minus Ea R over T. That's it. And what we have here is K is the reaction rate. A is the pre-exponential factor, factor. R is a constant, gas constant is sometimes how it's referred to. Ea, E sub A is the activation energy, activation energy. Okay. Um, the reaction rate is going to be given in terms of number of collisions per second between molecules. The pre-exponential factor also has those units and the reaction rate is the exponential factor times the pre-exponential factor. So the number of reac reactions that are actually going to happen is going to be some fraction of the, the what's allowed by the pre-exponential factor and that's primarily in our case going to be governed by temperature. In words, what this equation says is that for reactants to transform into products, reactants to transform into products, uh, they must have a minimum amount of energy, the activation energy here. Uh, you, and this is uh, using a Maxwell, this equation is derived by using a Maxwell Boltzmann distribution from statistical mechanics. And what we're saying is that the fraction of uh, molecules in the system, fraction of par particles in the system with an act with an energy greater than this activation energy um, is going to be proportional to this exponential factor. What can we say uh, in general? Well, we can say as the temperature goes up, uh, the reaction rate will also uh, go up. Let's consider a case from uh, semiconductor physics regarding image sensors, and that's dark current. Let me scroll down. Let's say we had a uh, photodiode. Uh, I'll just draw it very quickly. We have the N region and the P region. We ground the P region, which is usually how it is. And let's say that there are elect. Even if we're just looking at dark, we're not exposing it to light. There are going to be electrons building up. The holes get thrown away. Okay, those electrons, the dark current, can come from in general three sources. They can come from this surface. They can also come from this surface, or they can come from the bulk. This would be surface generated dark current, surface generated dark current, bulk generated dark current. How would we write a generalized expression for what we see from here? Well, K, which in our case here is going to be electrons per centimeter squared per second, is going to be, uh, let me write it down here, K equals a, let me just write it out, A1 e to the minus alpha over T, where this A1 is associated with this process up here, this activation energy is associated with this process up here, plus A2 times e to the minus beta over T, and I'm just arbitrarily picking beta and alpha, and I'm saying beta, this is going to be associated with the bulk, this uh, pre-exponential factor is going to be associated with the bulk, and then the final thing is a three e to the minus gamma over t, and that's going to be the term from the last surface generated dark current. You'll usually see when you look at dark current, they'll only give one of these terms. They'll only give, say, 
just the, you'll let me write it in a different color. You'll have this, and what they're usually assuming is that you're either bulk uh, do, bulk uh, dominated or surface dominated. And if you're surface dominated, they're assuming it's one of the two surfaces. And it may be true. It may be true that only one of these terms is, is dominant. But in general, you should remember that whenever you see dark current, it has components from a number of different factors that will add up together to form the final dark current. Okay, let's work through an example of an epoxy curing schedule according to the Arrhenius equation. I'm going to scroll down and show you some information I picked out of a, a random epoxy data sheet that I found on the internet. And this is what they, they say for a minimum cure schedule. So in other words, at 175 degrees centigrade, it will take 45 seconds to drive the reaction to completion uh, to cure the epoxy. At 80 degrees centigrade, it'll take three hours. Well, let me rework this uh, cure, curing schedule, this table, in, and, and convert it to uh, we have this listed here in Celsius, so we need to convert that to Kelvin to be able to use the Arrhenius equation. So this is going to be plus 273 is equal to 448K. Uh, I'm going to also use the, the temperature at 80 degrees C, that's going to be 353K. And I'm also, as a sanity check, going to use this guy, 120 degrees C and that's going to be uh, 393k. You can do the math. I'm going to convert all of these uh, units over here into minutes. So the 45 seconds is going to be 0 0.75 minutes. 15 minutes is 15 minutes, and then one hour is 180 minutes. Okay, let's walk through the equation. So in the general form, remember we have, let me switch back to white, we have the Arrhenius given as K equals A E to the minus E A over R T. And I'm going to rewrite it slightly just to emphasize a point. E to the minus E A over R times 1 over T. We're going to look at this equation and try to find out what is this term here as a function of, well, not as a function of temperature, what is that term? And the question I want to ask is, how long would it take to drive the reaction to completion at room temperature? How long to cure at room temperature, which is 298 Kelvin? Now, let's say that there are x. Uh, X is the total number of reactions needed to drive the system to completion, in other words, to totally cure the epoxy. And you'll see that we get a lot of information uh, solving for X, even though even though we don't need, we, going through this equation, we don't need to solve for A. We don't need to solve for A. Let me just start that way. Maybe it will become clear. So let's say in the 175 degree C case, we want to uh, drive the reaction to completion. So X is going to be equal to 0 0.75 minutes times K at 448 Kelvin. The reaction rate at 448 Kelvin times 0 0.75 minutes equals a fully cured uh, substance. X is fully cured. Reaction driven to completion. Driven to completion. Okay. This part is going to be equal to 0 0.75 minutes times A exponential e to the minus EA over R times 1 over 448 Kelvin. Now X driven to completion is also going to, there's also going to be that many, that number of reactions for the 80 degree C case. And that's going to be 180 minutes times K at 353 Kelvin equals 180 minutes times A e to the minus EA over R times 1 over 353. Now, since X is equal, we can set the rest of the equations, the rest of the equation to equal. We're going to set this part over here equal to each other. It's a 180 in front of there. Just scroll down. We know that 0 0.75 times A 
times e to the minus ea over r times 1 over 448 equals 180 times a e to the minus ea over r times 1 over 353. The a's cancel out. We have, uh, let's do some rearranging. We have e to the, I'm going to say e plus ea over r times minus 1 over 4, 4, 8, uh, plus 1 over 3, 5, 3, and I'm going kind of fast, but you can double check the math if you like, equals 240. We have E A over R times minus 1, 4, 4, 8, plus 1 over 3, 5, 3, equals ln natural log of 240 which is equal to 5.48 and if you solve for EA over R we find that it's equal to 9118. Now I don't care about the units we could go through and worry more about the units but all I'm trying to do is is, is fit this function so that we can extrapolate what would be the curing schedule well how much time would we need at room temperature so let's scroll down let's double check our work using this we know that let me scroll back up we want we know that at 393 degrees Kelvin it should take 15 minutes using this function we just saw when we solve for E sub A over R E sub A over R do we get that well let's go through and consider the time it takes to drive the reaction to completion at 393 K times A times the exponential minus 9118 now we don't have the remember the form is e to the minus ea over r times 1 over t but we know this is this minus 9118 over 393 that's going to equal x which is equal to i'm going to use the uh, the the 180 minute part times a e to the minus 9118 over 353. Okay, I'm going to assume you can do the math. And when I do the math, T for 393 is about equal to 13 minutes. We expected it to be equal to 15 minutes based on the cure schedule above. And for the purposes of this calculation, that's close enough. Now let's go on and, and solve the question we're really interested for. How long solve for for time at 298k for t equals 298k? How long will it take to drive the reaction to completion at room temperature? We'll use the same equation we had here. So the time 298 times a times e to the minus 9118 over in this case 298 equals x equals 180 minutes times a e to the minus 9118 over 353. Let's scroll down. We have, if we run the numbers there, we have t for room temperature, the time it takes to drive the reaction to completion at room temperature equals to 21,168 minutes. That's a very long time and there's very little chance you would want to wait this long for the reaction to cure. So to the question about how long would it take to cure and maybe the follow-up question is it sensible to wait that long, using the Arrhenius equation we say that it takes a very long time and it's probably uh, the case that you don't want to wait that long.